Hello, today we're going to have a look at a Micronaut template. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it connected with a Postgres instance and running with Joop, uh, essentially replacing our ORM and Flyway, which is uh, managing our migrations. So I'm just going to talk about um, the components that we're using and their configuration settings, where they are and where you can change them. So the first thing that I'll have a look at is how the Postgres instance is running. And this is using the Docker Compose plugin. So uh, go ahead and add this plugin to your Gradle project and we can figure it here at the bottom. So all you have to really do is just specify the Docker Compose file that you're using. Um, so I'm just using the generic doc Docker Compose.yaml. And here we just specify the image that we like to use. So we're not using um, a custom Docker file. We're just using the off the shelf Postgres 9.6 image and just set up the environment variables to be what you'd like it to be. So essentially uh, the Postgres database name. So I'm just using MMO server, Postgres user, MMO server and the password. So they can be whatever you like. Just make sure that it's consistent throughout your project. So for instance, in the build.gradle file, we will specify a couple of variables here, which we're going to feed into Joop and Flyway. And, you know, you just need to make sure that they're the same. So I'd advise setting them up as um, environment variables on your system and just using them throughout. But, you know, feel free to do what you like here. Um, just while we're talking about the Docker, we just need to make sure that uh, you do reference it under tasks. But I'll, I'll talk about this shortly after. The next thing that we'll look at is Joop, since it's right there. Um, again, we're using a plugin. So this one's version 5.2. Just use whichever you like. I'd recommend the latest. And um, this might look complicated, but like 70% of this is just generic off the shelf uh, configuration. So you don't need to change much. Um, so the things that I had to change were these uh, SSL values, so by default it's set to true, but we're not using this in production. This is just using your Dockerized Postgres, so this is false. If you don't change it, you might silently fail unless you put debug uh, enabled, so uh, do note that. The generator, again, this is all generic. Uh, the generate, this is slightly different, so with the Micronaut application, you'll need to make sure that JPA uh, annotations is set to true. And also in this template, we're going to just demonstrate the use of DAOs uh, simply because it's just less code. You can see it using uh, the database a bit easier this way. Uh, but I'd recommend using the context because that's more efficient, uh, but it is a bit more code. So, yeah. Also the package name here for the target. So this is your uh, where the build stuff will go to. Um, you can put this to be what you like, but you will need to... Uh, update the component scan settings to match this. Uh, we'll go through them. Well, we can go through them right now. So they just open right here. Uh, here you can see the JPA default entity scan settings. And here's the packages that it will search. And you can see that here is the same name that we've got referenced here. Okay. Uh, strategies, the default strategy as well. So these are the only things that we had to change from your generic uh, Joop configurations. Now, migrate primary database. This is your Flyway setting. So again, we're using a Flyway plugin. So just make sure you include it. And all you have to do really is well, give it the connection settings that you would have to normally. But you have to specify the locations of the migration files. So this is where you do that here. So I'll show you the migration file example. You can see I put it under resources DB Postgres and it's just a V1. So change this to whatever you need. Um, I've just created a users table and user roles uh, because the next thing that I'll do after this is implement uh, JWT authentication and I'll want to include this kind of stuff. But you know, feel free to completely remove this, change it to whatever you like. Um, I've also added two insert statements, which you would not normally do, but for test purposes, um, I've added them. So, you know, remove this a bit later. 
um, and it just does some test data. Okay, so again, if you're planning to change the locations, just make sure uh, you change it in this reference here. Uh, so these are the tasks. Uh, so this specifies that the generate group has to run at the migrate primary database and the migrate primary database uh, depends on compose up. So this is depending on running this uh, docker compose yaml file and compiling Java will depend on migrating primary database. Uh, so all of these tasks are essentially dependent on each other and uh, so that's what sort of makes them run all together. Uh, the dependencies are, so we've also added Lombok here. This is just to make the code a bit cleaner. And we've also got Micronaut inject because uh, it's a bit different to uh, Spring Boot, which has also why we have inject here. And the main ones that we're interested in are these database configurations. So Flyway using JDBC to carry driver, uh, Duke and your Postgres drivers. I think this is everything we need from the build gradle file so we can have a quick look into the application.yaml file so uh, again some of this stuff you might not need so for instance um, I put the server to run on port 8081 it's 8080 by default you don't need to change this it's up to you um, again the juke data sources default SQL dialect except to Postgres this shouldn't be required I believe it's it can uh, auto detect this on its own. Uh, the entity scan we've covered briefly earlier, you will need to do this. Uh, so just make sure it's the same as the juke build packages. The data sources. So this is very important as well um, because for Micron or in uh, to connect to the database using inject and your juke built components, it will need to have uh, these settings correctly configured. Uh, these URLs, they're essentially the same as uh, the ones here. Um, so again, you can expose them using environment variables or similar, so it's up to you how you do it. And I've also just used a couple of Hikari group settings. I'd say, well, change them to what you need them to be, really. It, it depends from project to project. Um, okay, so I think these are most of the configuration settings that we need. Uh, I'm also going to do a small demonstration of the controller actually running. So uh, I've configured a basic controller for the account. So what do we have here? Uh, we've got a account controller. And we've got a get mapping for a get user. And all we're going to do is fetch the, uh, the account by username. So I showed you earlier, we have the users table. Uh, we're not going to send back all the data. We're just going to send back the username and email. So we don't want to be exposing things like password, right? Uh, so I've just sh demonstrated like uh, some good practice uh, exposing just a couple of fields instead. So we've got the service set up. So the service has the account repository. And all we're doing is uh, saying user is account repository fetch user by username. And we're just going to construct this small account DTO with the username and email. So very simple stuff. This is not based on a real use case. This is just to demonstrate the capabilities of pretty much all of these uh, components together, these libraries. Uh, and let's have a look at how this repository works. So I've configured the simple users DAO and uh, this we've got a simple constructor here which will load up the configuration and uh, load this up for us. Um, but alternatively, you'd wanna use the DSL context because it's more efficient, it'll be faster for you. Uh, but it's very easy, it's a one-liner with the DAO, so that's why we're using it here. Um, and that's it, really. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. You have your DTO, you have your repository, you have your service. And let's give this a test. So in order to build this project, uh, you can just 
click build here or uh, build it in your terminal. I'll just demonstrate it working. So you can see it's uh, got the Postgres instance up and running, migrating the database generating food so that that finished successfully so we can have a look at it here right so we can see that it's spun up this image and yeah everything's running there so we can click run on this and we'll test this using postman done you know it's ready once it's a startup completed and running on localhost okay so now we can send some requests you can see I've already done a couple in the past the first request take a while to do but after that significantly improves in performance So you can see the first request took a, an unreasonable amount of time, but after a while, it takes 20, 30, should be faster. My, my laptop's a bit slow now, I guess. Um, so what are we doing? We're sending uh, a request, a get request, to your local host, port 8081, account, get user. And we've got the parameter here set up, username, with a value of test. So, you know, to satisfy you that it's actually working for real, we can just add one here. It's not going to find this, right? We, we didn't put any error handling, so yeah, this will essentially throw an exception. Um, and the valid request, it goes to the database, fetches the correct data, puts it in a DTO, and sends it back. So here we also do uh, JSON serialization. And by the way, Java's pretty slow with that, so bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, so this is it. Cool. Have fun.